Hi everyone and welcome to my booktube channel Reading Closely. This is the first video in my new series on suspense in fiction and film. Of course, in a broad sense, suspense is an element of many stories. I think that my first experience of suspense, not as a genre, but as a kind of manufactured sensation, manufactured by um, an, an artist, that is, in this case a filmmaker, was when I was very young and I used to watch The Wizard of Oz. And the part that I remember most vividly is when Dorothy is in the witch's castle. The witch has an hourglass, a great huge hourglass with sand in it that looks very much like a gigantic version of the little egg timers that most kitchens had in the time when I was growing up. And the witch turned it over and told Dorothy that she had an hour left to live. And so the whole sensation of anxiety about Dorothy was prolonged. At one point, the witch says to her guards, don't hurt them right away. We'll let them think about it a little first. And I think this is actually a kind of formula for suspense, the idea that the creator, whether it's a filmmaker or a writer, wants us, the audience, to think about it a little first, wants us to worry for the character. It begins really by creating a character that we care about. They then expose the character to great danger, not just um, some sort of social calamity, but true bodily harm, um, likely death in most cases. And they must, of course, reveal that danger to the audience. Not necessarily to the character, but always to the audience. The first time I think I saw a work of suspense as a genre was probably Rear Window by Alfred Hitchcock. That was back in college. And I can remember a specific scene where we are watching uh, what's happening at some distance. The, we and the protagonist are watching this together and a person that the protagonist cares about very much is in, again, extreme danger, like Dorothy was with the witch, only now in a very real life situation. So um, again, that anxiety is created and it's protracted. So essentially the creator is triggering a fear response, but that response is pleasurable because we know that we ourselves are actually safe. In works within the suspense genre, whether fiction or film, that feeling is elicited a number of times very intensely and helps to drive the story forward. Over the years that followed, I saw a lot of suspense films without really defining that genre or even recognizing that it was a genre. Fatal Attraction came out in 1987, Silence of the Lambs in 1988, Cape Fear in 1991. It's only more recently that I've begun to seek out suspense fiction. In many cases, the works that I'm reading are, are works that I've already seen as films. In this series, I want to explore the suspense genre in fiction and film. In the first phase, I'll be looking at works that exist in both forms, in fiction and film, and in each case, I'll probably focus a little more on the form that I consider more successful of the two, or both, if they're both, I think, really terrific works of suspense. It seems to me that the earliest works that I would classify as suspense begin in the first couple of decades of the 20th century. This, of course, is also the time when cinema is developing so that we see cinematic suspense developing alongside fictional suspense, and they undoubtedly influence one another. The suspense genre is very closely related to what we often call thrillers. Even so, I think that there are some different inflections in each of these two terms. For me at least, and I'll be interested what you think, but to me, suspense is connected with a great like mental activity and thriller is more uh, about actual physical activity. What they have in common is that both are much more about the expectation or the anticipation of 
violence rather than the actualization of violence. So that's different than a work of horror. We often see horrible things happen before our eyes in a, in a horror film or read about them happening before our eyes in a horror a work of horror fiction. These three genres are very closely related also to the mystery genre, but a mystery, um, and again, I'm interested in how you would define a mystery, but I see a mystery as more of an intellectual puzzle. It usually begins after the violent crime has already happened, and then it's about unraveling it and trying to figure out how it happened, and in particular, who was responsible for it. One way I've come to think about these different genres is kind of like a roller coaster. So if you can imagine a roller coaster, you have the part where you're heading up the roller coaster, up, 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 almost at the peak. This is this portion up here, up to the peak, is more like the sensation of suspense. And then as you start to descend and drop down that, that first moment of descent, um, that's, that's closer to the thrill of a thriller. In a work of horror, one of your fellow passengers would get violently hurt. Body parts might be flying all over the place and, and a head might land in your lap or something revolting like that. And then in a mystery, you would actually begin down on the ground. The, the violent act would have already happened. You're not in that roller coaster car at all. Instead, you're looking at the dead body and you're trying to figure out what happened. So it's often difficult to classify if something is, say, a work of mystery or a work of suspense, or if it's a work of suspense or a work of horror. Many works are hybrids of the different forms. In, um, in this book by Stephen King on writing, he refers to himself as a suspense novelist. And then he goes on to describe how he came up with the idea for his novel, Misery. Now, some readers might consider Misery closer to a horror novel because a lot of really horrible things do happen to the protagonist. It's not just about threats and suspicions and fears um, and the possibility, but it is about the, the actualization of violence um, in, in a very severe form. So this I would consider actually a kind of a hybrid between a work of suspense and a work of horror. In the comments box below I have listed the works that I'm planning to cover, both novels and films, in chronological order following the order in which the novels were published. Sometimes there was a significant gap between the publication of the novel or the, in some cases the story, and then the film that was related to that work. In the next video in the series, I want to look at two early works of suspense that I think represent what became these two main strands. So the, the true suspense, the more sort of psychological, mental activity, and the thriller, which is more about the, this physical activity. The Lodger, which was published in 1911, is very much an example of a, a, a heavy psychological kind of suspense. The 39 Steps, published a few years later in 1913, is more uh, like a predecessor of sort of the James Bond or Jason Bourne kind of thriller. And interestingly, both were made into films by Alfred Hitchcock. I'm interested too in your comments about the suspense genre, what your favorite works of suspense are. How would you define suspense? How does it differ from closely related genres like mysteries and horror? How does experiencing the work first in one form influence your experience of it in the other form? So that's all for today. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to be back in a few weeks.